Hi everyone, this is Denise from the University of Sewing and we're back for another episode of As the World Turns. Just kidding, we're just playing with fabric. Nothing so dramatic in the crazy world that we've got going on. Playing with fabric is a great way to distract yourself. I highly encourage it. So the block that we're doing today as we continue our journey through Granny's 1930 sampler is block number 11. And this is an oldie but a goodie, I'm sure you've seen it. This is the double pinwheel. It's a basic four patch, but it's got these triangles and it has square triangles and then quarter square triangles. And the tricky part about this one, if there is any tricky part, is playing with those triangles and the bias cut. The, the secret I think really is not to play with it too much. Don't fuss with it, don't stretch it out. If you see, it's not quite as flat as I would like. And I think I played with it a little too much. So we'll do better on the second time around. This was our practice block. I always encourage you to do at least one practice block and then get out the, the good fabric that you really wanna use and go from there. So today, this is our other block that we're gonna put together. We've got half done here and we've got a quarter done here and we're gonna assemble this last square. Now I do have it on my little design board that we've talked about before. This is just a homemade thing. In this situation where I'm sitting at this awesome Bernina sewing cabinet, I'm not moving real far, but if I had to get up and walk across the room to cut or get up and walk across the room to press, it's a really easy opportunity to get things flipped around. And with my luck, I don't notice it till after it's put together. So this little design board or something similar helps to keep me on track. If it's something you're interested in, you're welcome to get in touch with us. Uh, Universityofsewing.com is our website, and we'd be happy to see about ordering something for you. We don't have any in the shop right now, but that, I'm sure that's something we can fix pretty easily. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna move my whole design board over, and we're gonna go this way to our friend, the old 880 Bernina. She's so pretty and so much fun to play with. The first step, we're gonna put these two little triangles together. And we're just flipping them on top of each other, making sure they're lined up nicely. And I'm gonna grab my little clippy over here. My arm's just a little too short. And we're gonna go ahead and stitch. Now, because we've got these pointy ends, we're stitching from here to here. It can be a little tricky to start at this very pointy end. So we're gonna start here. But another secret I have for you in working on these tiny little points, I'm hoping our camera can get in there and see, we've got this straight stitch plate on our machine today. So it's got this little hole here and it will only work if you're doing straight stitching. If you try to do anything else, you will definitely break a needle and possibly hurt your machine, which is never a good idea. But when you're doing something with these tiny little points, you wanna use the straight stitch plate so that they don't get sucked in there. That's so annoying when that happens. I do wanna show you what the other one looks like just to compare for you. I'll turn them around this way so you can see, I think. So this is of course for more decorative stitching for zigzags and all the fun things that your machines can do. But it's real easy for these points to get sucked in there while you're sewing. And that's no fun and it slows us down and that's not what we're looking for. So I would also remind you too, I know things live on YouTube forever, but this is being filmed in March of 2021. Bernina is having a sale, 20% off presser feet and accessories. That's a great time to get one of these straight stitch plates. If you don't have one, I think you should consider it. So let's move on to our sewing. Get this guy out of the way a little bit. And we're using our quilting stitch, which is a little smaller than a regular straight stitch. We're going to take that guy out of the way. And I am using the 57D foot, which has this lovely little fence on the side here to ensure that I'm getting a nice quarter inch seam. We're going to let those threads be trimmed. Alrighty. And then let's see how we did. Whoops. 
it doesn't want to open. Not bad, so we do have to press it. And in this instance, we're gonna go ahead and press to the darker side, which would be the purple in this instance. The pattern doesn't give you pressing directions. So it's kind of up to you. I will say as we get closer to putting the, the whole block together, I would encourage you to press things open. That'll make that seam in the corner where all of those pieces meet a little less bulky and you'll be much happier with that. But for this guy, we're gonna start with the dark side on top. Give him a little press here. And then we're gonna roll them over. And again, being mindful of those bias edges, we don't wanna stretch, we're just pressing it flat. And we're gonna do one more time. A little shot of steam in there for good measure. And then we're even gonna put our clapper on. Put that to work today. Those clappers are so handy. It's such a simple concept, but it really does make those seams a little flatter and as quilters know, the flatter the better. And of course our long armors appreciate that too. Alrighty, so we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna add it here. An easy way to make sure it's centered. We're gonna fold this one in half gently again, really being careful with those edges and just put a little crease here to find that center. And it's a little hard to tell on that dark fabric, but we're gonna line that crease up with our seam line here. And then we know we're in good shape. All right, so I'm carefully gonna move over to the sewing machine and we're gonna assemble this corner piece. Hold my threads out of the way. Now this time we do have that pointy edge of the triangle. So this is really where that straight stitch plate is amazing. And I think most machines have them. I know Bernina has them for, gosh, I think everything they have, all of the, the line. And we just let the machine do its thing. Trim those threads. And we'll open this up just to take a nice peek. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and press it. And then this, uh, this time, we're gonna press that seam open. And I'll show you why when we put the whole block together. So we're gonna start just by setting that seam, making those threads get a little tighter. And then, we're gonna start with it this way, just to get the crease in the larger triangle piece. Make sure we get everything to behave the way we want it to. And then we can go back in and open this guy up with our fingers. If you have one of those tiny little irons, this is a great time to use those. If you're sewing with little people, this part I probably would not encourage them to do. You might want to do that part. A little steam. And put our clapper back to work there. So while that's setting, let's talk a little bit about um, fabric choices. So you can see we've got a little variety. We've got a light, a medium, and a dark. That's going to give us the best contrast so that you'll see the, the individual parts of the block. I think this would make a really cute block in maybe patriotic colors. Red, white, and blue would be adorable. It would be a really sweet baby quilt in, um, you know, some nice baby-friendly colors, something really cute. I'm sure it would make a new mom very happy to snuggle up her little one in something like this. The double pinwheel is a classic block that's been around for a long time, but it's so much fun. All right, let's see how our seam is. I'm going to give him one more shot this way. just because. Why not, right? Okay, so now let's go over and we're gonna trim these dog ears off and then we're gonna start attaching things. We've got our cutting mat here. You don't necessarily need the rotary mat today. It does come in handy though, just for moving around your sewing room. Our 
let's move this guy over instead. Now on this square ruler, I've got the little sticky labels on the back to keep it from sliding around. I do like them. I think they're pretty handy. I find them very useful. But there's something that I want to try that maybe you guys have already tried. I'm curious if you have how you liked it. We've got this in recently, non-slip coating. And this you spray on lightly on the back of your rulers. And then things shouldn't slide around. You can use them on long arm rulers. You can use them on your domestic machine rulers. So I'm gonna give that a try. And I hope if you have tried it, you will leave me a note in the comments. I'm really curious how it worked for you. So with this one, we're gonna trim off, I'm gonna trim off these dog ears. I'll put my glasses on so I don't trim off the wrong thing. That's never fun. And a good square ruler with a 45 degree mark in it, a 45 degree line is really useful for putting this block together, even for just cutting out the pieces. And you can see here, I can even line it up just to continue to square. So this is the 45 degree line on my ruler and it goes along with that 45 degree seam on my block. I can move it around as I need to just a little bit. Block's looking pretty good. And then we've just got this little one here at the top. I know that we've got lots of new people that are joining us and I just wanna say welcome and we're grateful and we're glad to have you. We've got some quilters, we've got some non-quilters. I think we even have some non-sewists who are just a little curious and that's awesome. We are very glad to have you watching. I hope you will jump in with us. This particular pattern that we're doing is 42 blocks. I'll give you another peek at the book here. So we are doing each one of these. Today we are on number 11. So if you have not yet started, there's plenty of time to jump in and join us. It's a great way to try out different blocks and different techniques and stretch your skill set. If you're just beginning, if you were to work through this pattern and do all of these blocks, I would say you would have a fantastic foundation for just about any kind of quilting you want to do. So consider it. I hope you'll join us. Now we're going to go back and add the other half, making progress. The tricky part is to make sure we don't turn it around because that's what I'm really, really good at, but I don't recommend it. So we've got this piece already in shape, so that helps. We know that guy's going to go there. And then this one, see I'm trying to turn them around now, is going to go that way. Yep, that's it. If you're not sure, a really cool, easy tip, take a picture of it with your phone and then look at it because you will always see it in the picture even if you can't see it up close. I don't know why it works, but it works for me. So let's put these two together. Oh, I missed some, some dog ears on this guy. Get that one out of there. Easy fix. Now we do have this diagonal seam that we're matching up with this one. So we're just gonna lay it carefully on top of each other. And if you see, I just kind of fold it in and it will follow along the other seam line. And it's up a little far. Make sure we're in good shape here. Alrighty. Using my knee lift to lower that presser foot. So if you guys are enjoying our videos, and I hope you are, please make sure that you are 
giving us a thumbs up on YouTube. Share them with your friends. Even if you just get a good laugh out of it, share that with your friends. All righty, we can press this one open and we are gonna press that seam open. Let's get some threads out of the way here. Some people I know trim their threads all at the end, but I find that a little distracting. I think it helps me process where I am and what's going on without those guys in the way. All righty. Just a nice press to set it once again. The finished block on all of these are um, eight inch finished, eight and a half inches unfinished. So that's our goal. Some blocks we get a little closer than others, but that's all right. I don't know why, but there's something very satisfying, I think, about a nice, flat, open seam. Let's put our clapper to work. And then we'll attach this to the other half. And our block's going to be done, guys. We're really close. All righty, moving right along. And see, no drama. Just fabric. Fabric and thread and fun machine. A wonderful distraction. That looks much better. So let's go that way. Now we're going to flip it over. Again, lining up this seam with this center seam. I'm going to put a little clip here just to make sure that doesn't move on me. You can pin, you can clip, whatever your preference is, whatever works for you really I think is fine. There have been a few times when I found one to work better than the other. I don't think this one is one of those blocks. along the edge of that quarter inch foot. Slow and steady, right guys? Gotta make that fit in there a little better. I love to hear all those clicking noises the Bernina makes when it's cutting thread. Well, I think it looks pretty good. Look at those points in the corner, in the center rather. We just need to give it a good press and this one's ready to hang on our wall until we are ready to assemble all of those blocks. This is definitely a marathon project, not a sprint, but that's all right. This would be a fun project to do as a group if you've got a guild or even just a bunch of friends or neighbors that want to get together and work on these. You may find that you can share the uh, teaching part of the techniques around and say, okay, you show us how to do this one and you show us how to do that one. It's always more fun with friends. And again, we're pressing open and really this is why. Look at what's going on here in this center. There's a lot going on in there. You can hear my iron gurgling. Flip it over and then we'll add our clapper and let that guy do its job. Give it a nice press here. Alrighty. So, while that's doing its thing, cooling off, becoming perfectly flat because that's how I want it. Because that's the way it works, right? Not always. I have something else I want to share with you. We are a long way from thinking about the quilt label for this quilt, but we just got a really cool bolt of fabric in with panels that I had to share with you. So this is, 
put it over here so you can get a good look. This has got a wonderful variety of quilt labels. And it is a panel, so it's sold, it's cut this way. And you have got, I don't even know how many. Well, there's 12 there, so maybe 24 on here. But whenever you're doing your quilt, whether it's the granny sampler or the one for your grandkid to take outside to play with the dog, please always put a label on them. It's so important. The uh, Your descendants and the people in the future who look at your work will be so grateful that you took the time to share who you are as well as um, your gift of sewing. These you can fill in all the information, you know, who the recipient is, when you made it, maybe why you made it, what the occasion was for. Your machine embroidery unit would be a great way to do this. You could certainly do hand embroidery. There are permanent fabric markers. You can just write it in. There's so many ways to do it. Just please make sure you do it. Now, let's check on our block. I like it. I'm gonna leave it there and have Dave just zoom in on it because it looks so pretty, I think. So this is block number 11 in our sampler pattern. Next week we are doing block number 12, which is known as the square and the square or the economy block. It is another paper pieced block. It is two parts of the paper also pieced together. So we will have some seams to match up We'll get to practice some of that fussy pinning that we talked about a few weeks ago, but it should be a fun block. It's a great one for fussy cutting, some of those really cool prints that we've got. So I hope you guys will join us. Thank you again. Universityofsewing.com is our website, and we'll see you next time.